There's no doubt Super Monkey Ball has a big reputation for being an incredibly difficult game for any player. The stages have been described as so hard that people give up playing, and even a prick away from impossible, but that's not nearly enough to stop speedrunners from putting in thousands of attempts and heaps of practice to stretch the game to its limits and optimise their times more and more. Shortly after the game's release in 2001, a small community of players were battling it out for high scores on individual stages, referred to as ILs. However, I'll spare Monkey Ball's IL history for another day. In this video, I'll focus on real-time attacks, known as RTAs, of full normal mode difficulties. Categories in the first Super Monkey Ball differ from those of the later games, as the ability to unlock up to 97 extra lives was not a feature in the original. As a result, normal mode categories are split into two separate categories. Take Beginner for example, is split into Beginner and Beginner Extra. For Beginner and Advanced, extra stages are only unlocked provided the player completed the regular floors without losing a single life. Thankfully Expert allows some margin of error, allowing for extra stages to be unlocked so long as a continue is not used, but this is by no means easy. An additional and brutal 10 master stages can be unlocked, given Expert Extra was then beaten without using a continue. The challenge of completing master proves too difficult for most casual players, and results in a very unforgiving speedrun, an impressive feat if you can even get your name on the boards. Each of these categories is then further split into subcategories. Normal, which allows for the use of green and red warp goals to skip floors when possible. All levels, which prohibits the player from using warps. And for some, any percent, which I'll get into later in the video. Despite not being the most popular category, no doubt due to its difficulty, Master is regarded as the main category by many players, and therefore will be the focus of this video. In the early IL community, some members, notably Smiling Jack 13, had mentioned and attempted 9999 playpoint speedruns, but quickly gave up due to the massive challenge of what they were attempting. Not only would this run involve unlocking and completing master, but doing so without dying once and without using warp goals. It wasn't until 2010 when the idea of RTAs really started being put into practice. Beginning on the 10th of October, a number of monkey ball races started being recorded on the website Speedruns Live. The site allows for users to race with one another in real time, and a small click had taken an interest in racing monkey ball. Well known speedrunner and co-founder of Speedruns Live, Narcissa Wright, was frequently appearing as an entrant for the monkey ball races. By January of 2011, Narcissa alongside another user, Norg, was regularly achieving expert times between 13 and 15 minutes. There was also the occasional master attempt, with times nearing the half hour mark. In that same month, Narcissa brought her monkey ball expertise into the public eye by completing an expert through master speedrun at Awesome Games Done Quick. As Narcissa had only one shot at her run, she understandably used very few strats, choosing to play most stages carefully rather than quickly. Her final time was 27.52, which may seem laughable now, but was a big deal at the time and event this took place. Many strats were known of already at this time, thanks to ILers and adaptations of their techniques to suit an RTA, but only a select few were considered viable for a run. After GDQ, races continued throughout the year, and in September a master RTA was posted to YouTube on the account Swordless Link. The run was completed by Narcissa, achieving a 12.04 expert time and 18.54 master. This was a huge improvement on a GDQ time, and as Narcissa stated, was not only deathless, but also included fast but risky strategies, such as Expert 8. She noted that her run could be beaten if she were to perform more insane strategies on a number of other floors, and hoped that it would spark healthy competition between herself and others interested. But was anyone else up for the challenge? Turns out, there was. Narcissa's run was rejected from Speed Demo's archive by a user who had occasionally appeared in the races on SRL. Now known as Clarice, there was a new contender for the Monkey Ball world record. 
Clarice stated she had planned on running the game back in 2009 and stopped because it was incredibly difficult to run well and she didn't enjoy it. After rejecting Narcissa's run for using few strats and having general slow play, she felt the need to provide a run herself, having deprived SDA from getting one. And, on the 6th of May 2012, Clarice had completed her run. She posted it to SDA stating a time of 7 minutes and 27 seconds, along with detailed notes of the run on every stage. The 7.27 was calculated using the in-game timer, with the run being a 16.09 RTA, blowing Narcissus 18.54 far out of the murky waters. Clarissa's run was also deathless, and performed many of the insane strats Narcissa had mentioned in her submission, including the elusive Expert 8. Her run was going to be very tough to beat, however it didn't come without its flaws, limited as they were. Most notably, hitting the goalpost on E13, costing her a massive 1.6 seconds. Let's instead focus on where Clarice saved major time over Narcissa. As I mentioned earlier, it wasn't that these strats weren't known, but rather thought unviable for a run. Here's a quick side-by-side -side comparison of some of the more noteworthy improvements. After the 1609, races continued, and so did Narcissa's attempts. She pulled off her world-famous 1810 later that year, but it seemed like no one was getting close to beating Clarissa's time. That was until a new contender rose from the bowels of the earth, from the depths of hell. In late 2012, an Aussie speedrunner by the name of Bahunga started master attempts of his own. By the end of the year, Bar had achieved an 1846 and continued to shave off seconds throughout 2013. As Bar was inching closer and closer to Clarice's record, he began to incorporate a strat almost comparable to E8 and officially began his world record attempts. The strat Bar was using was on Expert 7, perhaps one of the most hated stages from people's childhoods. It involves backing up along the first section in order to get a clip from the starting platform over to a later part of the stage. Take my word for it, it's bloody hard, 
and only saves around 3 to 4 seconds, but that wouldn't stop our hunger. On the 13th of October, Barr managed a deathless personal best, including the E7 strat, but a clumsy mistake on extra 4, literally the easiest stage in the entire run, cost him the world record. He finished just a hair's breadth off Claris with a 16-13, putting him comfortably in second, still ahead of Narcissa. Is this a deathless run? Well, I haven't finished yet. I could die here. Oh. PB. Four seconds off world record, oh my god. <laughs> Another thing separating Clarissa's run from both Bars and Narcissa's was her decision not to pause on the stage E42. Now Bar and Narcissa weren't pausing to have a pinch of snuff or go for a quick slash. They were using what's known as a pause frame. The concept is simple. If you perform the exact same inputs at the exact same times on a particular stage, it will return the same result each time. This might sound inhuman at first, but thanks to the handy notches around the GameCube's thumbstick, the visible in-game timer, and the ability to instantly pause at any time, it's really quite straightforward. Take Bar's E42 as an example. He starts the floor by holding up left, then quickly pauses looking for a frame. He wants to pause at either 5970 or 5968, then switch to and hold upright before closing the pause menu. Doing this guarantees him the right inputs at the right times to successfully clip over to the red goal every time. This was the same strat Narcissa used, and you can see she also attempted a pause strat on extra 5, but missed the frame resulting in a nasty time loss. Unsurprisingly, pause strats exist for more stages than just E42 and extra 5, and at the time of bars 1613, frames were also known for Master 7 that would save around 12 seconds if performed well. That's right, had Barr chosen to use the M7 frames in his 1613 attempt and been successful in executing the strat, he could have beaten Clarissa's time by a whopping 8 seconds. Damn! However, at the time, it's understandable why he chose not to use pause frames. During this period, there was a significant opposition to the use of big pause strats by many SMB speedrunners, Barhunger included. They considered big pause strats to be a cheap or unskillful way to save time and didn't want the 1609 topped solely to the use of pause frames. With this in mind, Barr continued runs without the use of pause strats and even removed the E42 frames from his attempts as well. While Barr still did attempts through the following year, they were very infrequent and it was clear his main focus was on his other interests. It wasn't until January of 2015 when a new player stepped up to the hockey, ready to chuck a nine data of Monkey Ball World Records that would shatter the earth with devastating blows. His name was Columbal, and after swiftly shaving his time down to a 1628, himself and other keen community members were on the hunt for new strats and pause frames, hoping Callum would be the one to finally top Clarice's long-standing 1609. And on the 26th of February, Callum kissed the red lipstick, landing his first dart firmly into the double top. Oh, fuck. It had finally been done. Clarice's almost three year old record was beaten, and Callum had no intent to stop there. His boudoir of new strats included E12, two cycle E17, E19, a second bumper skip on 36, E41, an earlier gimmick on 48, earlier cycle on extra 3 an extra 8, with pause frames now being used on E14, E27, E50, Extra 1, Extra 10, Master 1, and of course Master 7. Callum's run was by no means flawless, he went through the goal on 65 of them, and included a number of mistakes such as missed frames and even a death on Master 9. It was his new incorporations, along with high quality execution, which chipped him off the fairway and onto the green, just inches from the pin. Extra 10 and M7 could potentially save up to 20 seconds alone. 
He also made use of a clever load manipulation to spare another short spurt of time. By loading the first stage in practice mode before your attempt, it shortens the loading screen after selecting expert by about a second or so, proving useful as timing starts upon selecting the difficulty, so the load time is included in your run. Twenty days later, Callum landed his first dart in the treble, PBing by a mere two seconds. Unfortunately, he deleted his run, as only a day later he slung a second arrow into the bed, taking his time down to a 15.46. Get in there, mother In terms of strats, not much was new since his 15.57. Most time saved was simply from improvement of execution, getting strats he'd previously missed. He did make minute improvements on stages such as E13, E26 and most notably Master 2, but the big difference was quite simply higher quality gameplay and yet his run still featured two deaths. Soon after, a new player lunged from the shadows, making the bold statement he too was capable of times as good as, if not better than Callum's. He claims to be called the Lost Llama, and pasted his name into the list of world record holders on the 19th of April with a 1544. Llama's run was interesting, as he was opposed to heavy use of pause frames, opting only to use frames on Extra 10 and Master 7, the big time saves, and therefore excluding a number of Callum's newfound strats. Even with this setback, and two deaths of his own in Master, Llama had broken the record. It was a conservative month before Callum scrambled back to the top of the leaderboards, ready to score his 180. 1539 with three deaths, 1536 with three deaths, 1527 with one death. Callum was quickly inching towards his goal, which by then was any time faster than 15 minutes and 20 seconds. By now, frames had been found for Master 9, one of the hardest stages in the run. Not only did these frames save time if executed well, but also massively decreased the risk of dying on such an unforgiving stage. In November, Callum struck the treble again, finally managing a deathless PB and also reaching his sub-1520 goal. He broke the final tape at 1519 and decided to take a well-deserved break from Monkey Ball. He made the following assessment of his run on Discord. I decided to do the maths out of interest. The base amount of time I saved over Clarissa's run, with the use of pause strats, not including the time lost on the pause screen, was 28.3 seconds. Including time I lost on my pausing was 22.4 seconds, which amounted to 5.9 seconds total loss across E14, EX10, M1 and M7. PB had really good pausing on those levels for me. So apparently my run was around 27.6 seconds faster on pure movement. Then obviously there's a couple of stages I lose time on pausing for consistency sake. But little did Callum know, little did we all know, that during his time off, Monkey Ball speedrunning would change forever. In August 2016, the Reddit user Mr. T Squared 88 made a post to our speedrun claiming to have found a glitch in Monkey Ball 2, which took him from level 6 straight to level 50, the final floor. His post stated this Okay, my friend and I are very casual players of Monkey Ball, but the other night we were playing on level 6, I believe it's called Jump Machine, and we passed through a goal after the announcer shouted Time Over. The monkey celebrates winning a level with the time over text over screen, and no information was given about beating the level, so we assumed we just had to redo the level. Then we were brought to the stage from the stage 11 glitch. The level name was just a bunch of random letters, and it said 50 in the corner. After beating the level, it brought us to the extra stages. We've been trying to recreate the glitch, but haven't had much luck, but we wanted to post our findings to the internet, and hopefully someone can find it useful. It didn't take long before Cyclops Dragon, a Monkey Ball Taskmaster, was on the case. He was able to recreate the glitch on the SMB2 stage brandished using TAS. By then, the whole community was at work doing research into this new glitch, and found the following. 1. The glitch works in SMB1, 2 and Deluxe, for both PAL and NTSC. 2. The glitch can be performed on Expert 1. And 3. Pause frames to execute the glitch on E1. But how does the glitch work exactly? Well, I'll do my best to explain.
When the game time overs, the stage itself continues moving for just one frame. So if you time over in a position where stage movement alone will put you through the goal tape, on the exact frame before the tape breaks, you'll both time over and complete the stage at the same time. On stages like Brandished, the goal itself is moving, so it's easy to see how you can break the tape while there's no input from the player. On Expert 1, it's actually the movement of the party ball that pushes the monkey through the goal tape. Simultaneously timing over and completing the stage results in what we believe to be an underflow error, respawning the player on the final floor disguised as the stage they just performed the glitch on. Despite the appearance, the stage acts the same as the normal final floor and will take the player to extra upon completion, provided they didn't use a continue of course. So, with this new discovery, and even pause frames to accompany it, there was an open invitation to take the master record, with J. Cole being the player to capitalise on the opportunity, achieving a 5 minute and 55 second run. Amongst the excitement of the game changing glitch, the community agreed it should fork right off and become its own subcategory, now known as Any%. Percent. Callum then beat J. Cole's record by the following October and took it down to a 522 just over a year later. By now, in late 2017, Callumble was back in action and ready to complete his 161 checkout. With his goal now being a sub-15-10, he had just a smidgen of room for error and expectedly, hours of practice and relentless grinding ensued. On the 16th of November, Callum sunk his penultimate arrow into the treble 17, this time entering the final goal just three seconds sooner with a 15-16. There were no new frames, no new strats, and two new deaths, so how did Callum manage to top his deathless former PB? Turns out, it was down to really, really good execution. He'd spent hours in practice mode, every day, on every stage, working harder and harder to improve his movement to be as good as it could be. This is evidenced on long stages like E24, where he broke the tape with over 29 seconds remaining. It was these optimizations that pushed him over the edge to claim another PB and world record. Callum worked out, had his run been deathless, it could have been as low as a 15.03, proving he was just on the cusp of reaching his final goal and landing his last dart dead centre of the bullseye. And on the 29th of November, he did just that. It's on! Through the tape with an incredible 1508, a revolutionary near-perfect world record which shook the community. Callum had finally completed not only another deathless, but a superbly executed run, reaching his long-term goal of a sub-1510. Callum stated this in the description. This run felt super sketchy, but after two years I finally reached my goal of a 150x in this game. I had zero confidence in my buffering today, but I somehow managed to haphazardly hit all the frames anyway. I always choke E50 strat on expert record pace, but whatever. Made it so I wasn't really nervous at all for the rest of the run. Outside of that, the only other bad point was a really stupid, slow E18 for whatever reason. I want to give a huge thank you to the Lost Llama, Zella1, Claris, Jekyll114, Bahunga, Byers, Cyclops Dragon, and everyone else who contributed to making this run what it is today and motivating me to keep on playing. I really do appreciate you all. What a touching sentiment. And now, over two years later, Callum's 1508 still sits at the top of the leaderboards and it will likely stay there for many years to come. Looking back, it's crazy to see how far Monkey Ball speedrunning has come. From Narcissa's initial 1854 back in 2011 to Clarissa's long-lasting 1609, the early beginnings of Callum's Nine Data, to Lama's month-long claim to fame, and finally, the gradual staircase down to the 1508, which still stands strong to this day. For anyone interested, I created a stage-by-stage -stage comparison video between Callum and Clarissa's world records, so you can see for yourself everywhere the run has been improved since 2012. This will be linked in the description. Thanks to everyone who watched the video this far, Feel free to lambast me in the comments for anything I got wrong or any mistakes I made. 
Thanks to everyone who helped me with making this video, and all the runners who took Super Monkey Ball on the journey it's taken, and keeping the game alive to this day. Cheers everyone.